What a day. It's good to be alive. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. <laughs> I wasn't always the friendly, carefree guy you see before you today. <laughs> I used to take things very seriously. I never had time for fun. One day I realized something had to change. I needed to work on me. <laughs> now I've got a whole new outlook on life. I realize that it's okay to put myself first. I found out that I have a knack for bringing people together. Whoa! And I learned how to let loose with friends. <laughs> I work hard. And I play hard. So, I only have one question for you. Ready to have some fun? <laughs> What's up, everybody? Okay, it's, I'm sorry, I'm excited. It's great to be here. <laughs> but, um, you know, working on our Overwatch hero takes a full team. And I'm thrilled to introduce some of the amazing people who helped bring him to life. Um, we have Kyunso, our narrative designer. <laughs> Alec Dawson, our lead hero designer. <laughs> Foster, senior test analyst. <laughs> and the amazing Rakan, our senior character artist. <laughs> okay. So we could probably talk about Malga or any panel for ever, but we only have like 45 minutes, so let's just jump right into it. Kyunso, let us know a little bit about Malga's backstory. Of course. As Dion mentioned during the opening ceremony, people have been fans of Malga or Manga for a very long time. We've released six heroes with Overwatch 2, and for most of them, if not all, people have been speculating if it was going to be Manga. But here's a very quick introduction of him for anyone who doesn't know who he is. He was originally introduced in 2019 in the second Overwatch short story, What You Left Behind, written by Alyssa Wong. It's a story that follows Baptiste, and Manga makes quite the appearance. Manga and Baptiste worked for Talon, and they were pretty close friends before Baptiste left. And Manga made an immediate <laughs> impact are kind of like frenemies. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look at him. Look at that sly, self-satisfied <laughs> grin. He's just the guy who wants to have fun. Woo! Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but be careful. Behind his grin, there's always a threat. And he uses his big, jockey personality to hide his cunning side. One of my favorite lines in that short story is when he just goes, it gets real Shakespearean up in here. <laughs> He's our first Samoan hero, and we worked really hard to get that right. Throughout his development, the team worked with three cultural consultants, and they also helped us refine the Samoa map. And beyond the cultural consultants, we also worked with the brilliant Samoan tattoo artist, C.E. Lufau, to get his tattoo just right, because they have such a huge cultural significance mm -hmm. in Samoan culture, it represents their heritage, their past, present, and future. So we knew we had to get this right. Yeah, it was, um, it was interesting. When we first started to dig into the tattoo, we had done some drawings where Omnix were tattooing on uh, Malga's back. And once we started to work with um, CE, he was like, um, a tattoo is something that a human transfers to uh, a Samoan. It's a sacred experience, right. yeah. And so he had given, given us this feedback that um, 
the, 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 depiction, the depiction of a, a, a robot or something without a soul basically transferring a tattoo was not the right thing. And so this was what's, what's so fun about meeting these different people, the different culture experts. They really worked hand in hand with the character artists and the narrative mm -hmm. designers. And just, we had fun um, figuring this out. And Malg is such a fun and unique hero. This includes his lore, the art, the design history, his abilities. As you all either played him already on the show floor or at home, because you can play him right now, uh, you should get what you're, you kind of get what you're actually experiencing with him. So, to talk a little bit more about the abilities, Alex, you want to break it down, what his gameplay is like? Yeah, let's talk about Malga and sort of what he brings as a tank to Overwatch. Um, his style gameplay, he can either charge in alone or he can go with his team, right? Because he's this big, high threat level who sustains through dealing damage. And that's how he's really unlike a lot of the other tanks is, you know, he has this passive that actually keeps him up as he deals critical damage. So it's one of the things where he's constantly in the fight, he's brawling, he's destructive, because that's the way he is keeping himself alive and in the fight. Another thing he does is he, his guns are hit scan. You know, when developing Malga, the team really wanted to look at a tank that could counter Farah or Echo and have an ability to actually contest them while they're in the air from afar or even up close. So when looking at Malga, there was a few things the team really wanted to get right. And talking with Josh Noh, our lead balance designer and the point designer for Malga, you know, he talks about the guns being core to this hero. Now, Malga's one of those kits, say like Widowmaker, where the gun comes first and then all the rest of the abilities follow. Along with his weapons though, we also wanted to make sure we could have abilities for a character of this size. Malga is huge. He's huge in game as you may have already seen. He's the biggest hero that we have in the game so far. So what do you have to do to compensate for that size? You know, he's a big target. And then finally, it was about getting this personality right. He's aggressive, he's destructive, he's in your face, but he's also smarter than he looks. And that really started with the character that narrative and art were telling. I think he's about seven feet or something. Yeah, he's, he's a big the guy. biggest character yeah. we yeah. made so far. And I, I mentioned earlier that his name, Malga, means mountain in Samoan, so we had no choice but to make him big. Uh, and had you guys touched on it, he has this I really like his play style, it's very, it feels brutal, but it, there's a lot of strategy behind um, the approach. And Overwatch heroes aren't just about their abilities, we take great pride in their personalities too, in this short story that you mentioned, um, published around two, summer 2019. Um, we, and then we suddenly released Sigma later, <laughs> if you guys remember. And actually Sigma was the, we envisaged him as Malga at first. And, as we started to play with these psychic abilities and, and the, the different powers that this character that would eventually become Sigma, but we intended it to be Malga, it just didn't feel right. It, it, he's a big dude, you know, like Foster was there when we were trying out a bunch of abilities. And it just, it, it, Malga wasn't the guy, like I think you mentioned, uh, he doesn't psychically throw the rock at you. He picks the rock up and throws it at you. And so we decided to pivot um, during that time. Yeah, so these are both tanks, right? But as we developed the tank kit that became Sigma, we kept coming back to Manga's personality and that he's this big guy, he's smart, he's very aggressive, and even if he had the ability to psychically throw a boulder at you, mm. he wouldn't, he would pick it up. It's a show of force to pick up a boulder and hurl it at someone. And then along with that, in Sigma's kit, he has his barrier. How does a guy holding two giant guns yeah. named Gunny and Cha-Cha hurl this barrier out, how does he deploy that? So from a game pace perspective, that wasn't really working out, so we kind of drew that back, mm -hmm. and we released Sigma, we pivoted to Sigma there, and then for Manga, we just went back to the drawing board and thought more, how can we nail down this personality type? How do we make the hero he's supposed to be, yeah. and not kind of force abilities on a personality that it doesn't really fit with? And so we developed that mentality, but that physicality, and that was in tandem with ability design, and then also with art, where we looked at, okay, how do we represent this giant of a man? Mm -hmm. And it came down to giant guns. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it was really, you know, the, the, that part was subverting expectations and mm -hmm. didn't necessarily make sense for Malga in particular, right? Uh, but Rakan, I think the guns, you worked a ton on them. Do you want to go expand on that? 
Yeah, uh, <clears throat> something that I really love about working on these heroes is how we almost challenge uh, each other and push our different teams in new ways. Malga is super fun, but that's only because the team making him that way. How his design has changed, his story has evolved, and seeing uh, his abilities be refined, it's a full team effort to line these pieces up. So let's get into his specific abilities. He has these massive chain guns, Gunny and Chacha, two of my favorites. Alex, what do they bring to the fight? Yeah, so he has these two guns, but unlike other dual-wielding heroes, such as Reaper, each one does something different, and they can also be fired together, right? So let's watch the video to take a look at these in action real quick. So you have his incendiary chain gun, his left quick, that sets opponents on fire. It takes 10 hits to set the opponent on fire, so they'll be in a burning state, or they become vulnerable to his right click, his volatile chain gun. And when you deal damage with that, it deals critical damage. And this is a pretty important because whenever Malga deals critical damage, whether it be through volatile chain gun or through headshots, he actually gains temporary health mm -hmm. as well. Um, so this was a part that we really wanted to get right in its development, where there was this mini game between both of the guns. It allows Malga to play at actually different types of ranges. Malga can play really up close, mm -hmm. rail on both guns at the same time, or he can be a little, little bit pokey sometimes. A little bit of left click, a little bit of right click, and get to that rhythm that can actually deal a lot of damage. And that on fire ability, where he lights someone on fire, is actually really unique for our game because it also works in tandem with Ash's Dynamite. Mm -hmm. If you light a target or a bunch of targets on fire with an Ash on your team, then he gets that crit damage across all of them as long as they're on fire. So there's a little more cohesion between hero selection now than there mm -hmm. used to be. Yeah. And that's something new that we've done. This also, as you mentioned, works with his passive, his Berserker passive, he gains bonus health from all those, so if Ash lights up the entire team, you can go crazy getting your extra crits and your additional health and everything, and it's really amazing. Yeah, that's what Malga's really using to keep himself alive in a fight, you know? He wants to make sure he gets that critical damage, set opponents on fire, and then right click to get the bonus health. Oh yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> The fire passive was kind of a really in interesting development issue and we had to work around because adding fire to Malgus kit, which is a really cool idea, it added a lot of challenges visually to the game. So artistically, there's a lot of people on fire now in the game and with so many visual elements, um, it would be asking even more people systems, the game engine to possibly two different heroes are setting people on fire. These two different visual we need to figure out how to kind of separate the two so that you knew who was doing what. Um, this also complicates things for players that may also be colorblind from distinguishing what types of fire damage would be a little bit more trickier and could lessen their experience. By combining all this together, we like put our heads together <laughs> and we came up with a really fun pairing mechanic that isn't overpowered but could be really fun to play with. It's like a nice bonus. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're all wondering where the silly, silly names of Chacha and Gunny came from. I am wondering. <laughs> you did all. Um, it actually came from just joking around in team chat. I think we were all agreeing that Manga is the type of guy to give his guns pet names. Mm -hmm. One of the top contenders was Lefty and Righty, but Alec here didn't really like that. <laughs> so. Uh, I just, it sounds really stupid, I know, but we just took the first three letters from chain, from chain gun, and made it cha-cha. Okay. And gunny, cause duh, it's a gun. And the team really liked it. Okay. And Rakan here just threw the ball out of the park and he actually implemented the names into the gun's <laughs> designs themselves. So speaking about lefty and right, I mean cha-cha and gunny, <laughs> being that he has two weapons and they deliver different types of damage, it was really interesting challenge to get that look just right. Uh, if you look at the earlier concept, uh, you'll see that his weapons looks different from the one that we have now. Well, the concept looked great. Once we put that in the game, it just didn't look right from the first person angle. So then we had to go back uh, for the concept, rework them. And uh, fun fact about these guns, they are the biggest guns in the game but they are also the biggest guns in the game. So, <laughs> you know, for Mal. Uh, I, uh, I want to say a huge shout out to uh, Malga Strike Team. I know your guys are out there. And uh, especially Jeff Mianowski for the awesome work that he did <laughs> on the character. Yep. 
and uh, also for the tech team, especially John Curran, who did an incredible job with adding new technology to Mauga, which I'm going to say some big words now, so focus with me. Mauga has the first fully automatic muscle system in his body. We've never done that before. So while he's moving his arm, you see the bicep. I mean, don't look, zoom in here right here. See how the bicep, <laughs> bicep. All of that, Mauga got it more. automatic. So again, our tech team is just doing incredible work. And if you look at this slide, it all started as a joke. I was like, these guns, I, I bet they're, they're bigger, bigger than, than Tracer, tra right? And then I just put this scene quickly together. I'm like, yep, they are definitely bigger than Tracer. <laughs> so technically, Mauga's running around holding two Tracers like that. That's why they're orange, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. This is our new scale. How many tracers is it? You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think we're going to make guns uh, this big again. But you know. oh, here you can see the before and after, like how we had to adjust the barrel size. So it was just right in the 1P because uh, once we put them in the game, they were blocking too much from the view. And I know you guys love your, you know, the whole thing to be clear as possible. So we, we fixed it. And. Uh, uh, if you think about uh, like Tracer and Reaper, they have two guns, right? But Mauga's gun is, I would say, a little bit bigger than these guns. So that's why we, that issue showed up when we did these guns and we just edited it. And hopefully now it just looks perfect and you guys will love it. Yeah. And beyond his guns, his ability overrun is also quite fun. Uh, let's see a video of it in action. As you can Boom. see, he charges forward and he lands in a huge stomp, launching his opponents in the air. Uh, this, I think, perfectly encapsulates Maga's personality. Definitely. <laughs> During Overrun, Maga is actually unstoppable. He cannot be CC'd, you can't sleep him, you can't boop him, you can't stop him from getting where he wants to go, because he's this big guy who just needs to get where he, he needs to be. So once he starts going, he's going. Get out of his way and prepare for once he stops. <laughs> also, when he lands on an enemy, as you can see here with Reinhardt, if you are precise and land directly on an enemy, it's a brief stun. So if you've got a Cassidy preparing his ult and you want to stop that, you can charge right in and land on him, and that's a stun. It'll stun him right out of his ult. So hacks. Yeah, it's nice. It has a little bit of skill <laughs> expression there. It's one of those abilities that was really important for Malga that we had to get right because he is this big, big body. So, you know, if he's charging at you, it was really easy to CC him in, in that way. So adding Unstoppable here allows Malga to get where he wants to go, get in the fight, rail down on both chain guns, like hold both those buttons down and deal a lot of damage. Right. Uh, but this ability in particular went through quite a bit of iterations. Um, there was one version where Malga would run up and launch the enemy behind him. Um, Oh, I think a lot of the kit at the time was Malga was an anti-air tank overall. So he, he was dealing critical damage to any enemy in the air. So you would throw them behind you, you'd turn around, you'd actually use Sigma's rock as a, as a combo back then. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this ability in particular, a bunch of iterations. And I really like this version that we ended up with. You know, it is something that is forceful, allows Malga to get in. And the stop at the end was something that came in rather late in development, but it was just icing on the cake to an already great ability. Right. Also, if you're curious about just avoiding it, uh, compared to Reinhardt's charge, this can make the hairpin turn in Circuit Royale. So good luck avoiding it by going around a corner <laughs> real quick. Yeah. Poor Reinhardt. Um, cardiac Overdrive. Let's talk about that. Yeah, Malga's second ability here, Cardiac Overdrive. Uh, when thinking about Malga's defensive capabilities, we wanted to match his personality and play style. You know, he's destructive. He likes to get in. He likes to deal a bunch of damage. Uh, look at the scoreboards later on today during your Malga games. There's going to be a lot of damage from Malga in particular. But how can we capture those things with the way Malga sustains himself and also make him you know, help his team? the role of a tank to actually lift those allies up a little bit too. So let's take a look at Cardiac Overdrive here. Yep. When you activate Cardiac Overdrive, Malga and his nearby allies receive damage reduction and receive healing based on how much damage they do. It's a big lifesteal aura that gives your team the window to turn the fight in their favor. It pairs well with other heroes that have high damage output and are able to uh, move with the aura. Uh, here's like to get in the mix. Uh, if you think about a Reaper double dipping with Cardiac Overdrive with his own life seal, that's good. That's super scary. In this video, which should show up anytime right now, I think we have a video queued up for it as well. You'll see Soldier 76 will be gaining some help right go. here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you look at Soldier HP as he's uh, shooting with the Cardiac Overdrive, you can see how it's healing him up. Uh, we visually needed to find a way to let. Um, 
to let you know that you are getting that aura. So on the screen, uh, we added a burning effect. It's really important to find that balance, communicating to players that is going on without overloading the screen with too many different things that can either be distracting to or use up computer um, resources. Yeah, this one went through quite a few iterations as well. Um, many of the early renditions of the ability were quite selfish, actually. Um, he had this adrenaline meter where by dealing damage, you gain movement speed, and then you could consume some of it to actually heal yourself. Uh, and then that ended up becoming his berserker passive. So a lot of that came in where it's like, hey, Malga still wants some self-sustain in there. Another version that we tried left a pool on the ground instead of traveling with Malga. But you'd be confined to this space, and it kind of fought against how aggressive Malga wants to be. You know, he really wants to use Overrun to get in, get in there, and just deal a bunch of damage, be destructive, be brutal. So by putting what that ability was uh, ended up on the Berserker passive, it freed up Cardiac Overdrive to be something that you could use for your team. And with how it works now, you know, it encourages Malga to use in, uh, to use it, get in with his teammates, this big window of opportunity. Uh, characters like May and Reaper really love this ability. Okay. The sound design of this ability is worth shouting out as well. Um, when you initiate the ability, you actually hear the sound of double racing heartbeats because Fun leaked fun fact, <laughs> Manga has two hearts. Uh, he received a, a cybernetic heart during a pretty intense battle, and then later on upgraded his organic one. And the sound team really hit it out of the park. Mm -hmm. It's such a visceral, powerful sound. It really makes you feel powerful in the moment. The yeah, yeah. And actually, you can see heart canisters in the Samoa map in Manga's room for his, you know, regularly cybernetic upgrades. Um, and of course, alongside his, we can't forget his shark slippers, because uh, Maga, Maga likes to relax in style. I need a pair of those. Yeah, thank you to the environment art team, because they, uh, they always take my silly ideas and just run with it without questioning <laughs> me. So speaking of heart canisters and shark slippers, that brings us to his ultimate, cage fight. <laughs> so for his ultimate, Maga deploys a barrier and along with it, as you can see in the middle, a little totem that traps everyone inside that barrier with him. So any enemies that are in the location where he is, it isolates all of them with him for him to be able to take them on 1v1, 1v3, 1v5 if you're feeling spicy. <laughs> but it isolates these targets by putting a huge barrier around him, which means the rest of the team might be locked off for them, and it keeps them inside, which can prevent them from getting where they need to go. So the biggest challenge when developing Cage Fight was keying into having players understand what this ult does and how it works. And so we developed it with these chains that are very visible and holds you in place so you know you're trapped and you know you really need to, to knuckle down and defend yourself against this man who's coming at you with you trapped in here with him. And we have a video for that. So as you can see, when he deploys it, the Reinhardts are chained with him within this barrier. He can unload on them. You also might notice that he has infinite ammo during this ultimate, so people are trapped in short range with you, and you may as well just hold down both of your buttons at that point. Yeah, it's an ultimate that can be quite versatile, um, depending on the situation, the team composition, you know, the state of the battle. A lot of the times, you really want to get one target in there, you know, isolate them from the rest of their team, try to burst down a support. But sometimes, <laughs> I mean, I, we've seen a lot of playtests, people that go and they want to trap the whole team in there, right? Uh, I think there's already some combos uh, online that people are discovering. You know, if Malga tr traps the whole team in there, Life Weaver can pull Malga out, but the rest of the enemies stay in that zone, stay in the cage fight. So there's a lot of things you can do here. Sometimes it's also just a giant barrier. You know, it can just yeah. be this big barrier in the clutch because it has a bunch of health, quite big, takes up a lot of space. And recently someone said, Maga is starting a fight he has no intention of losing. And a big part of that is knowing when and where to start that fight. So playing as Maga at the, the lower level, just trapping people with you is a really good thing. It, it feels good. But at the higher levels, knowing when and where to deploy that to keep the tank from getting back to the point, to trap supports with you so they can't help their team, to trap a specific hero so that their supports need to decide if they need to jump in this barrier with you or not to try to defend them and protect them. 
you wind up with these a lot, a lot of these cases where based on your comp and their comp, you can make some really interesting, fun decisions about how you should use this all. Yeah, and this was an ability that we actually tried previously as well. There's mm -hmm. a bunch of iterations oh, yes. for other heroes at one uh, point, right? Yes, this was actually originally uh, D.Va alt. Way we'll back when we were developing D.Va. Questionable version as well. Yeah. Oh, no, the, the D.Va version was actually a giant sphere that shot lasers at everybody inside yeah. of it. And we eventually, we didn't go with that. It didn't feel good for, for that hero. But we never throw anything away, so we, we worked on it. There's been a few different iterations over the years, and with this one, I think we really nailed what we want. <clears throat> yeah, one of the most difficult things to get right, I, we, I think recently we tried this for Junker Queen mm -hmm. as well at one point. Uh, one of the most difficult things to get right was the shape language of, hey, or the communication mm -hmm. going on here, where you're in a barrier, but then you're also stuck there. So we tried some things where it was a physical wall, actually, instead of a barrier to sort of communicate that. Yeah. But then the chains came in, and that was really the difference. And I think the strike team and everyone working on Malga not to have the part to finally get that one right. Surprisingly, this is the one time that solo alting someone is not overly frowned upon. <laughs> Wait, he's not <laughs> saying you should do it, though. Yeah, and for those of you playing him, uh, keep an ear out, because if you trap only one enemy, there might be a fun little Easter <laughs> egg voice line. That'd be cool. Yeah, and before we finish up here, I do want to talk a little bit about, you know, Malga and where he fits in the game, right? Right. So, Malga, we envision him as being in a lot of different comps, similar, uh, a lot of different rush comps, similar to Reinhardt or Junker Queen. You know, if you think about heroes that are going to enable him, you think about heroes like Lucio that can really get him into a fight fairly quickly, or even someone who can sustain him. You know, Malga's this big body. He needs a lot of healing, right? right? There's, so you know, maybe someone like Lifeweaver can help him out and actually keep Malga alive in that fight. And then tanks going against him. You know, he is a tank that relies on dealing damage to keep himself alive. So if you think of who can prevent that, uh, tanks like D.Va, tanks like Sigma, are definitely ones that have a good chance against countering Malga. That's awesome. Well, <clears throat> as you guys can see, the team really put a lot of love and care into these heroes. But Malga feels extra special. We really went that extra mile to make sure he was just right. But before we leave, what has been, I wanted to talk with the guys just really quickly, what has, been, what has it been like working on? What has meant to you working on Malga? Can tell? Oh, yeah. Well, it's just been an honor to work on one of the most anticipated heroes of Overwatch 2. The narrative foundation was so strong. Um, it was just so much fun and a privilege to just build upon that. And I think we all sort of remarked on this when we were talking with all of the Samo and cultural consultants. We all, like, they were all just so joyful. They had this, like, joie de vivre. Um, and we were all really inspired by that. So I think you could really see it in the hero. You know, he just, he's just a big guy. He wants to have fun. Yeah. And we really wanted to instill that part of the culture into the hero itself. Awesome. Alex, he's finally out. Yeah, I'm very excited. I mean, people are playing Naga right now. That's, <laughs> that's incredible. But I think one of the biggest things taken away from Naga's development is seeing how the team took the time to get Malga right. You know, at one time, we talked about Malga with Sigma. We also switched Malga for Matra to have more time yeah. on Malga in particular. And it was just the team taking the time to make sure that this hero in particular came out in the best iteration possible. So shout out to Josh No and the rest of the Malga Strike team for what we're going to release in season eight. Cool. Oh, and Foster. Oh. Applause. <laughs> season eight. <laughs> Josh No. So. <laughs> Thank you. Uh. So one of the things I really love about Overwatch heroes is how big and bold and over the top they are. Their personalities, as well as you know, abilities in a video game. And Maga, I think, really nails that kind of big, bold personality that I love in our heroes. He's out there, he's open, he's big. And when we nail that really well, they become charismatic beyond the kinds of people they may actually be. So, the, most, the previous hero that did this for me was Junker Queen. Junker Queen is this big, bold personality. Even though she's not the greatest person overall, you really connect with her and her personality and how big she is. And they're, what? I love okay. Junker Queen. <laughs> Have you seen what she does to Omnix? <laughs> oh, sorry. You. So, 
I think MAGA also nails that, where despite what he does and his work with talent and the kind of person he is, he's so big and lovable that you just really want to connect with him, and you do, and you, you enjoy playing him as a hero, as a person, as much as, as a tool set that really works with you in gameplay. Awesome. Well, I gotta say, MAGA is probably one of my favorite heroes for now, like design-wise, I love it. And uh, like getting to work on his guns and just seeing the process of how they started till the end, like how all, all the challenges that we got and how we just you know got through all of them and we got the final designs. That that was just a like a I will never forget that experience. And uh, his personality, as Foster said, is incredible. I love him, and uh, I need to know his workout routine. Obviously, like look at that guy. <laughs> yeah, it's it's been an incredible journey working on here for sure. That's awesome. And yeah, for me. Uh, I kind of mentioned earlier in open ceremony, whenever we make an Overwatch hero, we really want people to see themselves in our heroes. This guy looks like someone I know. Mm -hmm. He looks like me, or his abilities are super fun to play. And I think we really nailed this with Malga. And Overwatch in general is this globe trading adventure. You're, you're traveling the world, you're meeting these different characters, these different heroes, and we're trying to hit every culture represent everybody as best we can. And I feel like um, the effort that went into this one, it just was next level. So you guys are super awesome. And thank you to all you guys uh, for joining us today. And have a fantastic weekend. And before we go, sorry. <laughs> Don't miss tomorrow's What's Next panel, where we'll be showing a bit more of the heroes coming after Malga, actually, with Aaron and friends. And my last thing I love about Malga is I love his guns. Not just these, but Gunny <laughs> and Cha-Cha. And speaking of Cha-Cha.